Even what, is, what came from outside, like cassava came from South America. Maize came from Mexico. Sweet potato came from the uh, Andes. Huh? Sweet potato. The, the potato itself also came from the Andes. Hmm? All those three things were brought by various people. Various people at various times. And they became part of the local food systems. When something becomes part of the local food systems, it becomes part of the culture. You develop methods of preparing it, of cultivating it, huh? and even consuming it. Very good example, cassava leaves. When cassava was introduced, it was for the tuber or the root. But now, you go to West Africa, I mean, uh, Congo, uh, and, uh, and uh, Rwanda, Burundi, it's the main vegetable, cassava, the leaves. Because as you live with it, people develop varieties that are suitable for vegetable. You get it? That is now coming to indigenous knowledge. Okay, let's, let's very quickly go to the next one, very quickly. So food diversity, I talked about it very quickly. Let's move very quickly. Mm. This is Bambara nut. You know Bambara nut? Yeah. Ah, it's, it's in Western Kenya, it's not found here. But also, of course, it's there. Simbande. Simbande, this one. It's one of the African crops. But it, it's disappearing. Why? Attitude. Let's move on. Maungu. Never laugh at anyone's food because yours is also funny to them. Huh? Culture, culture is like that. Hmm? This is, is this child malnourished? No. No. What is he eating? Maungu. This is Griyama. Termites, sisua. We eat them in my community. We don't eat this. But we eat termites in my community. It's very nice, very nutritious. And a secret, the future food. Because as people move away from beef, they'll turn to some of these traditional things which are really, really nutritious, including termites. Move down, please. Samburu. I, I, I won't ask you to do this, but if it is their food, let them do it. Nowadays, they koroga, mix with the milk, sometimes they, and then make mutura, mutura, which is really nice. Uh, this guy is okay. <laughs> he seems okay. <laughs> Continue, Samburu. Closer to home, vegetable, traditional vegetables. We said 210, 220 traditional vegetables. Just let's move quickly. Uh, now, if you look at this, all this green is what is found in the wild. That's cultivated in the wild, and this is cultivated only. Very small proportion is what we eat. Is what we eat. And let me tell you, in, I was in Kitui two, three weeks ago. And this one of the traditional vegetables is only found in this region, nowhere else in the world. As we were walking around, one lady said, my mother, my grandmother used to eat this. They call it wimbia. It's, it's, it looks like a vine, sweet potato. And then we asked her, if your grandmother used to eat this, why don't we try it, cooking it? We called a group of women and we prepared it. Cowpea there which is their five favorite vegetable, and this wimbia there, here, their favorite, ve I mean, something they don't know. Try, try, ask them to try. Which was better, who can guess? <laughs> that unknown was better, in terms of taste. Well, I don't know. Now, that's not good enough. When it's completely dry, 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 like now, that unknown is in the field, in their field. That other one, which they are used to growing, 
It's no longer there because it's very too dry. What, is, what we want to do is to analyze it for nutrient content and see the difference between the two. But now, now you see, the grandmother used to eat this, no longer eaten. But we have to revive, we have to work on people's minds. That is within this green, that unknown is within that green. Let's move quickly. I think you are familiar with Mutsunga, very popular there, the most important very vegetable here. Yet, who could nasema ni a rabbit? Mutsunga, uh, for rabbits. Here we say it's for rabbits, but here it's their main vegetable. Let's move quickly. What I want to say here is we have a, have a lot of diversity, but we have to respect other people's foods and try them. Huh? Try them. We have a big basket. We all like cabbage. <laughs> Those who like cabbage, eh? we all like cabbage. Okay, we all like cabbage. <laughs> and this is our pig weed. <laughs> this is our pig weed. <laughs> Never use that term. Eh? Yeah, yeah. We can only use the <laughs> no else, eh? yeah. Terere. Look at the nutrient content. So what you have in blue is cabbage and brown or towards the, that is yeah. water. Water. Ninety one percent cabbage is water. Yeah. So if you carry a uh, hundred cabbages, 91 of them will be water. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's not so important. Water is also important. But let's, let's look at this. Let's look at iron. Iron is a mineral everyone needs because it's, the, it, it's a constituent of, constituent of blood. Yeah. Huh? And, and for our colleagues, women, because of, of our monthly uh, occurrences, you need a lot of this. <laughs> and so you find quite many people are actually anemic yeah. or mildly anemic. Yeah. Yet this thing is here. Yeah. <laughs> so much iron in it. Yeah. Huh? And this is typical of the very vegetables we are neglecting. Yeah. Very vegetables we are neglecting. That's iron. Forget about vitamin C because vitamin C you normally get in fruits. Yeah. Look at beta carotene, which is a precursor of vitamin A. Vitamin A is known as vitamin A in uh, plants. Is it occurs as beta carotene? Yeah, vitamin A. But once it's, it's it goes to the body, the body synthesizes vitamin A. Look at it. Cabbage is down there, and you are. Terere or pigweed, what we call pig, is there. Vitamin A is one of the most important vitamins, especially for children, because it's good for all the surfaces, including your skin, your eye, sight, and for proper growth of children, you need vitamin A. Yet it's so abundant in these local vegetables, traditional vegetables. Forget about those others, but you can see for yourself. Let's go down very quickly. Mm. What is this? Corn. This is, as I said, came from the Americas, Mexico, long, long time ago. But local people have developed their own varieties, depending on where they are climatic-wise, which can withstand that climate. This particular maize or corn is, has a name. It's, it's known as Muzihana because the Jibana people of Coast Province, they have maintained it for a long, long time. And if you prepare ugali from this, what, what will be the color of the ugali? It will be purple or black. Purple or black. And now the Jibanas are leaving this because it's black, and black is not good. Very sad. Yet, if you compare yellow maize, brown maize, with white maize, 
in terms of nutrition, this is much, much better in terms of nutrition. Again, attitude, which we have to work on. Next one, please. The baobab leaves, very important. The fruit, very nutritious in terms of vitamin C. Vitamin C content of the fruit, eight to 10 times that of the, of the orange. We can actually use it for therapy. And yet baobabs are everywhere, in the coast province and in the dry areas. Okay, let's move on. Makonde people in southern part of uh, south, south coast, they are Makonde, originally came from southern Tanzania. And then during the war, we talked about the war, they fought <laughs> World War I. And some were, were resettled in, um, came to settle in, in Kenya, Makonde people. They like this. They'll collect them. Once the water moves in uh, mangroves because of tide, they move there and cl collect this. And they like it so much. And it's tasty. Yeah. Here, we are learning from them how they prepare those. But we are also trying to tell young kids huh? they should learn from their mothers what is indigenous and write stories about them. Let's go to the next one. They are collecting those. Yeah. There. Is here. Yeah. And in school, they write essays about their own traditional foods. This has worked because you start working on the child at an early age. But when they are big, come on, Nini. If you bend it, it will snap. <laughs> yes, next one. Yeah. I want to show you a case study very quickly how we promoted the very vegetables you see in Nairobi now, which came as a result of very hard work. Yes, go ahead. We started with the research, collecting all the types of vegetables we could find, brought seeds together, and started working on the different types. This is Arusha. This is uh, two, uh, just before the turn of the century, yeah? And these are the things we did. We looked at the indigenous knowledge. How do they? grow in the field? Do they have seeds? How can we cul cultivate them? And just continue. And then in 2001 and 2002, 2003, very big campaigns in Nairobi. This is, this is uh, Nairobi, Ailesla Avenue, campaigning for traditional vegetables. These are this some of the campaigns. And it's led by Chelimo, Chebi, <laughs> then the minister. Yes, continue. And for you to convince me to eat this lack of vegetables, there has to be a reason, the nutritional value, <laughs> the health reason. What benefits do I get? Health. So you see this a lot for campaigning even the media, and so on and so forth. That was back in 2001, two, three. Just continue. We linked, we linked the growers, some of the growers you see around Nairobi now, with Uchumi supermarket that time. With Uchumi supermarket. Uchumi started, Uchumi was very bold to put these vegetables there. And people started growing, I mean, buying. Slowly, slowly, they turn to be not the poor man's food, but the rich man's food. Yeah, just continue. Now, women sell these vegetables without fear in the, in the street. Before then, people would say, ah, why sell this? Huh? They used to call them majani mbuzi. Majani mbuzi means... Um, uh, leaves, goat leaves. <laughs> huh? It's not the case anymore. 
if you are seen eating these vegetables, you are no longer seen as a poor person. Let's continue. Yeah, let's continue. This, I mean, this, this, this is money the farmers are getting on a weekly basis. That's the last one. So what I'm saying here is it's possible. It's possible to turn those attitudes, negative attitudes, which we are implanted during the colonial days. It's possible. But we have, we have to work on it. Thank you.